Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, aka the guy who loves to get hammered off White Lightning, and the new Thor Love and Thunder trailer is upon us. Throughout this video, we're going to be breaking it down because fate wills it so. There's a ton of easter eggs, hidden details, and also lots of callbacks to the comic storyline by Jason Aaron, which this movie seems to be based on. Now I also want to go over elements of the first trailer, as that will help to flesh out parts of this as well. That opened with three versions of Thor running along on the same planet. We cut between these as a sort of montage to show Thor running through the woods at different ages. The first cut showed him as a kid, and this is actually played by Chris Hemsworth's son, who we saw in behind the scenes images. Next up was Thor in his classic costume from the comics, before we got him in present day. These three versions of Thor are actually all nods to the comic book run, as in that we watch Thor's battle with Gore over three different time periods. This included his younger self from 893 AD, the present day Avenger one, and a one from the far distant future, which had been battling Gore's Black Berserkers for over 900 years. Through time travel, Gore plucked them all out of their homes, and the three teamed up together to take on the villain. I don't think that will happen in the movie, but it is important to bear in mind. Now we know that after the events of Endgame, that Thor has been in a state of relaxation and meditation. This is signified by the line, His hands were once used for battle. Now they're but humble tools for peace. So the guy is going on a journey of self-discovery that will likely be interrupted by Christian Pale, aka Gore. When the initial teaser dropped, a lot of people wondered what planet this was, and having reread Aaron's graphic novel run, I believe that this is Indigo. The planet was populated by blue aliens like what we see in the teasers, and it's also how the story started off. A girl on Indigo ended up praying to Thor to help them, and upon arriving there, he discovered that this was because the planet didn't have any gods of its own. You see, in the Marvel Universe, every planet has its own gods that look after it and its people. However, Indigo was the first planet Thor had ever come across where there were absolutely no gods. Almost the entire population had turned to atheists, believing gods to just be fairy tales, a notion he found ridiculous. Upon ascending into the heavens, he found the gods' base in which they'd all been butchered, which, no prices for guessing who that is. That all kind of set off this almost murder mystery section for the first quarter of the book, whereas in the film, it looks like we're going to be following Thor as he attempts to warn the gods before Gore arrives. The book ends with Thor returning to Indigo to pray with the girl from the beginning to show him there are gods, which is how the story could wrap up. Kids, get to popcorn now. Let me tell you the story of the space viking, Thor Odinson. Now we open with Korg talking to the kids there, and you can catch the tree he was meditating under in the background, so potentially, this might even be him recounting the whole movie as a story, and it could be how it ends. Now the Guardians seem like they're gonna go to Thor for help in fighting the threat on the planet, and after this battle is over, they'll fly into space, probably searching for Gamora, who's still out there. At this point, Thor will be wearing his Thunderstrike costume, which comes directly from the comics. However, that bloody, that bloody Taika, He's also tied it in with a Ravager uniform, which makes me think he got it whilst travelling with the Guardians. Thor raises Stormbreaker and casts a lightning spell, and you might also notice that Drax is in the bottom corner hiding. See, Guy couldn't get his invisibility powers past me. Now Thor has two blue eyes again, which a lot of people called a CGI error, but personally, I think that he's just got a new fake one. We learn in Avengers Infinity War that Rocket smuggled it up his ass, so it makes sense that he'd want to get a different one, instead of one that smells like raccoon sh**. However, both the eyes being blue could somewhat show balance in the character, whereas in the past movies, they might have represented Thor being fractured, unwhole or incomplete. Not saying you guys with heterochromia are incomplete or fractured, it's actually a mutation, a very groovy mutation. He was a god. After saving planet Earth for the 500th time, Thor set off on a new journey. Well, he got in shape. He went from dead bod to god bod. And after all that, he reclaimed his title as the one and only Thor. Oh, spoke too soon. New Asgard also looks thriving, and you might also notice that there's a golf course there. King Valkyrie has appeared alongside Meek, who's dressed up as a secretary, and it looks like they're holding meetings for the greater world to get involved with their dealings. Now at this point we see the ship they'll be travelling through the stars on. This is pulled by Tooth Nasher and Tooth Grinder, who come directly from the comics and legends. These two goats pull the god's chariot through the sky, and we can also see the Cocktails and Dreams sign on it, that pulls directly from Tom Cruise's film Cocktail. Hopefully this time, he'll pop up as Iron Man, you dumb punk, where, where the hell were you? Everyone was saying you were gonna be in it. 
Now we also see him on what I believe is Sakaar and he's Goto with him at this point, really hoping that we see Jeff Goldblum back as the Grand Master and Gore might even consider him a god, but let me know below exactly what you think. Coupled with this a moment of him training, Wilds Korg narrates the story. We have him once more wearing an Avengers cap with the classic logo, but over the top of this he's written Strongest Avenger, which is a nod to the nickname he kept trying to give himself in Ragnarok. Now Jane Foster as the Mighty Thor is going to be a big part of the film. We've already done a full video breaking down what happens with her in the comics, but if you want a fast recap, then this part of the video is just for you, you son of a bitch. Interestingly, she didn't appear in the God of Thunder storyline, but it looks like they're squeezing her origins into this. Much like the MCU, in the comics Thor had lost Mjolnir, but he was deemed unworthy rather than being destroyed by Hela. The hammer called out to Jane who'd recently been diagnosed with cancer and she ended up picking it up whereas here it's clearly been pieced back together. My guess is that because you have to be worthy to lift it that the fragments of it remained where Hela left them. Either way, it's back baby and when Jane picked it up she gained the powers of Thor. However, there was a downside to it because it basically made her invulnerable and the cancer inside her also gained this strength too so it ended up overpowering her chemotherapy. The more Jane used the hammer, the more the disease progressed and after being told by her friends to stop using it, she eventually stopped. However, there was a big attack on Asgard and she ended up picking the hammer up once more. She defeated the bad guy but it cost her her life, however Thor called out to her soul at the gates of Valhalla and managed to bring her back. Jane vowed to continue her chemotherapy and eventually she got rid of her cancer. Now Jane ended up becoming a Valkyrie which I think is probably how the movie is going to end so Thor will probably still be Thor for the thor seeable future, eh? She also rides a Pegasus in the teaser so I think that this is further hinting at the role that could be coming for her down the line. She ends up blasting Mjolnir at one point and the pieces all come apart like a shotgun blast which is such a creative thing to do with the cracked hammer. He'll no doubt return to the handle and potentially that's how it's held together rather than being super glued like we chumps thought. Yes, we thought it would be super glued, we're chumps. See you chump. The old ex-girlfriend. What's it been like? Three, four years? <laughs> Eight years, seven months and six days. Give or take. Now once more we get a living tribunal easter egg and the character recently popped up in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness for a split second. I'm guessing that they're building to his live action appearance at some point because he was also hinted at in Loki 2. Now next we get Christian Bale as Gore. The only ones who gods care about is themselves. So this is my vow. All gods will die. His introduction seems absolutely terrifying and I love how a lot of his scenes have this black and white almost chrome like feeling to them. With the toy leaks a lot of people were let down worse than my dad was with me but by the look of it I think he comes across as a terrifying villain and I can't wait to see what he does in the film. Gore has a really cool backstory in the comics that makes you completely understand why he is the way he is and that's what this movie seems to be fleshing out. We learn that he comes from a harsh desert planet that had never ending daylight and because of this the natives of it had to avoid the sun as much as possible because of its potential to kill them. Gore was brought up by his mother believing that the gods would take care of them but when she was attacked by beasts and brutally killed, he started thinking differently. His wife also fell to her death whilst pregnant with their child and Gore, sick of having to lick slime off rocks just to survive, ended up going on an angry rant to his tribe in which he called the f***ing gods a bunch of f***ing stupid cunts. Now obviously the highly religious tribe go mental because they worry that the gods are going to wreak havoc on them for their blasphemy so they outcast him. He wanders through the desert and when he's at death's door, he ends up seeing two gods crash land in front of him, one of them being Null. This black goo from Null ended up infecting Gore and it powered him for millennia, also giving him access to the Necro Sword, a powerful weapon we know that Bale will be carrying in the film. Now Gore ended up murdering countless gods throughout the cosmos because of his first hand experience with their failings. He viewed them as arrogant, benevolent beings that didn't care about the people that worshipped them because they were happy to let them live lives of misery whilst they reigned on high. His whole mission was to build a weapon known as the God Bomb that would wipe out all gods in the universe and far in the future, he used many gods as slaves in order to construct it. He managed to capture the young Thor to help build this and we also met his new wife and child. His wife ended up completely worshipping him and realising that he'd somewhat become a god himself, she called him one. Angered by this, Gore killed her and after his son discovered her body, he decided to help Thor. 
The three Thors ended up battling with Gore, and the Avengers one attached himself to the bomb, as it was in the process of detonating. All the gods in the universe started to die, and in their last moments they prayed to Thor to save them, which powered him up enough to absorb the weapon. Gore was beheaded, and the Avengers version died, though he did end up coming back to life three days later. Taika Waititi has said that he thinks Gore is the best villain in the MCU, and I really can't wait to see what they do with him. There's also his Black Berserkers, which are basically beasts that Thor fights throughout the comics. Now he was tied somewhat to the symbiotes in the source material, but I don't think they can really go that route because of Sony, but hey, I suppose No Way Home ended up with one in the MCU. I just don't know if it'll strictly be that. Either way, watching the darkness around this white figure is such a cool image, and it really makes this introduction pop. These black and white scenes show up throughout the trailer, and it looks like the final battle will be in these bleak worlds that look darker than 2020. You are not like the other gods of Kill. Also worth noting that this line pulls directly from the comics, and Gore's fascination with Thor was purely because he wasn't like a god that he'd ever faced before. And I'm a poet and I don't know it. But I'm not a rapper. Now we know that Russell Crowe will be playing Zeus. I think he's going to be used as a way to show how powerful Gore is, and he'll likely be killed faster than the Illuminati when they start bragging about what Black Bolt's mouth does. He resides in Olympia, a giant land of the gods, that looks like it's based on an MC Escher painting. It is possible that this might be combined with Omnipotent City, which appeared in Jason Aaron's run. The giant floating structure in the sky appears to be similar to it, and inside the location was the Hall of the Lost, which contained scrolls and books recounting all the missing gods. Thor used this to attempt to track down all the gods who'd been murdered by Gore, and this is where he came across Falagar the Behemoth. The image of his slaughtered corpse pulls right from the comics, and I love how much these line up when you place the images next to each other. Falagar the Behemoth was the champion of the Tournament of the Mortals for five centuries, a god who wrestled with black holes for fun, so Gore killing him shows how powerful the villain is. There's a lot of shots of giant corpses across both pieces that could show Gore's killing spree. We have the giant skeleton whilst he wears the strongest Avenger cap and the Kraken by the ship. Now in the end he flicks too hard, which is what my wife said to me, and we get to see the guy that I stick up in the mirror. Really nice trailer, great way to end it, and uh, yeah, what a bloody banger. Now I am really excited for this film, and if you've read the graphic novel, then you'll know we've got a lot to look forward to. This is a comic I recommend even if you're not really into them, as it's definitely a standout Thor story. This movie has a lot resting on its shoulders, but I trust everyone to do their thing and really bring out the big guns. Christian Bale is going to be a massive get for Marvel, and though I know Multiverse of Madness was divisive, I think Marvel really did a lot with Wanda in terms of making her an unforgettable villain. I really want to see the same thing for Gore, and hopefully this movie delivers whilst also doing justice to the Jane Foster arc. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the trailer, and obviously I'd love to hear yours below. If you want something else to watch, we've got a video linked on screen right now, so you better head over there, otherwise I'm, I'm bloody gonna be angry. So angry, all the time I'm so angry. You don't head over there. Thanks for the click, thanks for watching the ads, thanks for the money, you son of a bitch. I'll see you next time. Peace.